Hey, I want to welcome uh, Betty Pomeroy. She's a retired colonel. She's going to be speaking about the uh, Washington County Fairgrounds Veterans Memorial shortly. Uh, a couple of wonderful faces that I see in the crowd. Wally Johnston, uh, Joe Vegas, um, uh, Marilyn and John McWilliams, John Tyner. Uh, the usual suspects, they're all here and it's uh, good to see you. Uh, coming up in the future, we've got uh, statewide electeds coming. Brad Avakian, uh, Bureau of Labor and Industry Commissioner, is coming on the 16th. We've got a TBA for the 9th, uh, and I'm sorry to say that. We've had a couple last-minute switches. But uh, coming up next year, we've got the uh, Northwest Independent Writers Association, also known as NIWA, and they're coming on the, uh, the 9th, and, excuse me, January 6th, and then on January 20th, we have the Westside Cultural Alliance coming. Uh, and uh, uh, if you'd like to see grown adults cry, come to our board meeting following this meeting. And uh, thank you for the courtesy snarks, I appreciate that. With that being said, what I'd like to do is turn this over to Colonel Betty Pomeroy. Could you give her some applause, please? Well, thank you, Eric. Oops, there we go. There we go. And thank you all for having me here today. Um, we've kind of been in a little bit of a holding pattern um, with the real push for the upcoming uh, Memorial Plaza or Veterans. Plaza, um, but I think we're going to be going forward now. Um, the county commissioners have determined that uh, there will be some gain share funds made available for this project, um, unaware of yet in which order of priority, but they have designated six areas and they will be moving forward. So just to um, get started, this entire project came about at a veterans committee meeting in 2009 over in the county admin service building. Someone mentioned that that was all of the recognition that the county had given to our more recent veterans. And we got to looking around and really there were not a lot of public displays of tribute to our veterans other than the nice park over in Beaverton. Um, hardly anyone realizes that Sunset Highway really was dedicated in honor of the 41st Infantry Division. Um, so we've been a little shy on things. So we got to looking around. One thing we found was a stone in the courthouse square dedicated to veterans of all time. Um, but it was covered with a rhododendron bush. Well, it got uncovered. And it also got a little bit of a scrubbing. So we initially thought, you know, that nice big plaza in front of the public service building would be a nice place for us to have a small memorial to our veterans. Maybe just the service flags and a um, couple of plaques and, and very modest. So we formed a 501c3 and proceeded. But suddenly, we found out we were moving. We were moving to the fairgrounds. Then Chair Bryan had decided that we should do something. Well, they, the 
county commissioners and the county staff and the city of Hillsborough all got together. And there's a little strip of land between the Max parking lot and what is now Veterans Drive or then the fairgrounds. Um, they put three flagpoles out there and a little bit of gravel and they had a plaque made and that was the beginning of the whole project and is now known as Veterans Gateway. That was all dedicated in December 2010. In the spring, we began construction on what is now the gateway. Our first ceremony out there was on Memorial Day in 2011 on the gravel in front of the flagpoles. But we had come up with a design and we had begun selling stones um, for any veteran with any tie to Washington County at any time. Um, I even bought one for a great grandfather of mine who is buried out in Forest Grove who was in the Civil War, the second Manassas. So all time. Well, we kept moving along and uh, LRS decided to pro bono a design concept. Uh, this is also on the back of your flyers uh, and you can tell the um, max parking lot, the gateway, and then Memorial uh, Veterans Drive is all through there now. In the upper left quadrant is where the plaza will be. That is what they now say we'll get some gain share funds. As an overall view, um, doesn't really do justice to, to the fairgrounds, but extending on is where we have the um, animal barns. The entrance to the fairgrounds will eventually be moved down and no one can enter the fairgrounds except through the plaza. In trying to keep things a little simple, we concentrated on one theme and settled on taps. There will be a large bronze bugle and all the words for taps will be inscribed on the stones. Taps is a very significant um, portion of military um, lore, so we felt that would be appropriate and it would be serene. I'll go back. Um, there will be a number of granite walls. Hopefully we can get some input from you folks too as to the famous sayings that may go on the front of those. We're hoping to have enough money to have enough of those granite walls for each of the six services and a seventh for the Oregon Military Department. On the back side of those granite walls will be our walk of honor. There will be benches and places for people to sit and reflect on the back sides of these granite walls, each of the services will be able to tell their story. Um, like 
Battleship Oregon has to have a good portion of the Navy wall. Um, at one time when it was first commissioned, there were nothing but Oregon sailors on that ship. Um, so that's uh, the kind of thing, because we want this not only to honor our veterans, but we want it to be a teaching um, experience that young students can come to and learn something of their, their history. So the Hillsborough City came up with Veterans Drive. Uh, it is totally completed now from 25th Street or Avenue all the way over to Brookwood. Um, I don't think they've opened the second phase of it yet. They're still working on lighting and traffic signals. But it uh, is a nice addition and takes a lot of, lot of pressure off Cornell and Baseline. In May of 2012, we had a Memorial Day service, not on the gravel, but on a, uh, in the parking lot at uh, for TriMet. But we also had a flyover. We put a tent out, but we don't have to go to the parking lot anymore. We received a state grant um, in the spring, and we have uh, now a cement pad out in the grassy area, and we can put our tent out there and look straight on to the gateway. This has been a popular little thing. We get the, the young folks involved in ushering and, and all. So this pretty well completes um, what we have done in the past. We continue to promote it, and we continue to try to sell some stones. And pretty soon we'll run out of all that. Oops, now I want to back up. I am looking for volunteers. I need some storytellers to go out and help me do this. I need a web designer. I need somebody to help with some marketing. I'm in desperate need of a grant writer and some people to help us with other special events. Now that it looks like we're going to be moving forward, we really need to get moving on the project. Okay, I'd be happy to take any questions. Eric Squires, forum member. Uh, Betty, first, thanks for a great presentation. I really appreciate it. Uh, would you tell me a little bit about the, um, uh, the backstory about how um, the county commission got motivated in order to execute this task? Well, you know, I'm not really sure. Um, I think they got wind that we wanted to take over the plaza out in front of the public service building, but I'm not sure. Um, I, I feel that, and, and I've never had the conversation with Chair Bryan. Um, but I think people felt that this would be one way that they could advance the entire upgrade of the fairgrounds um, to include a new public um, um, building that, uh, a multi-purpose building that would be placed down just behind where the plaza is going to be. Um, 
the um, Visitors Bureau has um, donated a million dollars for the project. There is no place in this county that can seat more than 200 people for a meal. So we don't do well getting any conventions. Um, so I think in the grand scheme of things, this, this all kind of goes together. John Leeper, forum member. Thank you, Betty. You spoke of a wall of honor, honor, and I wonder really if you could tell us a little bit more about that as to what that would be, what the requirements would be for anyone to be, have their name placed there, et cetera. Thank you, John. Um, I'm gonna put you on the spot because I'm gonna get you you guys back together who uh, helped us with this concept and we're going to have some heated discussions about what goes on the backside besides a little history of each of the services and the contributions of our local um, citizens who have served. Um, John Leeper was a member of a concept advisory team that we um, got from the community to help us um, and LRS architects come up with the final design. Um, their input was vital and it's time that we have this discussion again now that we can move forward, I think. That answer a little bit, John? I don't think we've really had that discussion as to what a criteria would be. Uh, whether there will even be names on it. Um, I think if we just honor the services in total, then maybe we're honoring uh, the members of those services. Um, there will be one special wall with a plaque for major donors but we don't know where that's going to go yet. Um, I can go. Back in here a little bit. Oop, there it was. Um, you see all those lines? Those are um, all graduated in various lengths, and they represent every armed conflict from the Revolutionary for, uh, War forward. Um, so that is just one way that we will um, etch out a little history in, in time lapse. But we will be um, starting a big campaign to get input for um, things for inclusion. Yeah, hi, John Tyner, forum member. Um, let me first ask, do you have any other association with the fair or the um, complex there? Um, we have an informal association. Um, we have presented everything step to them, to the fair board and their advisory council. 
and we have done nothing without their blessing and concurrence. Well, I was wondering, um, it's probably not directly on point. I, I thought this was about the fairgrounds. I, I didn't know it was about the Veterans Memorial, the fairgrounds. But I, I was going to ask you whether it's a fact appropriate for an urban county to even have a county fairgrounds anymore. You can ask that if you want to or, or not. I answer that or not. I, um, I'm, I guess I'm still not clear on the physical location. Uh, th is this on the area south of the fairgrounds next to the light rail station? Yes, sir. And, it, and its um, eastern boundary is, is what's going to be called uh, Veterans uh, Parkway? Veterans Drive, yes, sir. And the western, it's bounded on the west by what? Uh, 25th Avenue and... I'm not really good at my directions there. Well, basically, I get it. So, so the so the route that comes through right now, the 25th, that that hooks up from um, baseline up to um, Cornell, there's an, there's going to be another road parallel to that, hooking up to Brookwood. Uh, Veterans Drive hooks up to Brookwood. And it, and it current does that so currently now. Um, the first half from 25th to to 34th, going into Max Station from. Um, Cornell, you know, where the uh, right. airport is, yes. the road goes in. Um, they haven't opened the second segment to Brookwood as yet. They're waiting for some traffic lights. and But it will run all the way through there. Okay. What's happening with all that parking? It's displacing is quite a lot of parking, isn't it? The no, center? sir. Not at all? Not okay. at all. Thank you. Should open a little more. Because this is all a grassy area at this point. Yes, sir. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Chris Leslie, form member. And you have a website already, and you had a questionnaire form on it, which I thought you should mention to the public that. Uh, when they look up Washington Public County Fairgrounds and the Veterans Memorial, they'll find your website. And it had questions which I was thinking it, they were kind of involved. I was saying keep it simple, and I wrote last night, I get wordy sometimes, <laughs> to uh, honor all Americans who served and died. That's simple. That's very simple. The question would be, how are, is this going to affect the fair? Where's the parking going to be for the fair? They don't park where this is going anyway. They can't park there. They never have. All right, but you say that they would have to pass through it to go to the fair? Because the the main gate, which is down off of Cornell now, will move okay. down, and all that whole area up there can be parking. Okay. So actually, you go, and then they'll still use the fields, they'll still use Max. They're still hoping for more people to ride mass transit. They're doing a pretty good job with that. My suggestion, you might take it for what it's worth, uh, diagram the fairgrounds and the memorial better so that the public can understand this. Uh, on the back of your um, uh, flyer, there's it's a little more explicit than this is. Um, go back far enough to no, go in the wrong, wrong direction. Now this one tells you much better. Would you point out where the fair is actually? The fair is all back up on the back side. 
This is Veterans Drive. That's 34th and goes out to um, Cornell. Where's the airport? The airport is out there. Okay, at the top. <coughs> right, on the top right. So that's Cornell across the black line going. Right. Good. And then Max is down here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, Bill Kroger, a forum member. Thanks for coming in today. I appreciate it. I'm a Vietnam veteran from the Army, and I want to know why uh, the red Marine Corps flag has so much prominence in all your pictures. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> would, you, would you go? Go ahead. I have an old slide, and I have admonished many times LRS for when they did their drawings, not having the right sequence of uh -huh. flags. Yeah, the I, army, and my the army is supposed to be first. Army is always That's first. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, would you go over the timeline again, all the way up to completion? Because I, I don't have that straight in my mind. And thank you for coming today. Thank you. Well, um, the timeline from when we started the whole project? No, just kind of what's going forward from now. Oh, from, from now. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that um, working with county admin that we will be talking much more about gain share and how much of that will go towards this project uh, within the next four to five months after it's pretty well determined um, how much, whether or not all we can do is get um, the final architectural drawings and then it will be up to um, the 501c3 to do the major uh, monetary campaign or whether or not um, gain share will cover it all. Um, so a lot is still to be determined, but um, once that all starts, um, it should move along pretty well. So. Yes, sir. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you for your presentation as well. Joe Gallegos, uh, House District 30 representative, um, I, I, and former um, Air, Force. Air Force veteran, right? Yes. And I, I always thought the Air Force came first because of the. Uh, the Army Air Force. Yeah, it depends on which <laughs> way you depends on which way you enter. I think. Right. Right. Seriously, uh, I, I did want to hear a little bit more about the support you need. You you mentioned grant writing. What what kinds of grant writing? What kind of uh, what kind of grant uh, projects did you have in mind? I guess. Uh, grant wise. Um, there are some um, arts grants that could be available to, um, for example, do the, um, the bugle. Um, lots, lots of in-kind um, Education grants, the more education we can put into it, um, the better. Because the fairgrounds draws a lot of youngsters. Uh, we want it to be a place where people are proud to take young people to learn something about their history. Um, so those are the two basic kinds. Chris Leslie, four member again. Betty, thank you for your 30 years of service. I don't know that people really know that you've been so many places, from Okinawa to the Pentagon. And have any good stories for us? And I was in the Navy, and we <laughs> carried you there. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, you really did. You carried me to Okinawa. I, um, 
sailed out of uh, Oakland on the USS Billy Mitchell, uh, which was an, an experience in itself. We sailed on Columbus Day, 1962. And for any of you that were around at that time, there were a tremendous number of people on that ship that we didn't see until they crawled off in Honolulu <laughs> seven days later. And from there, we set sail after about 36 hours. And we were out in the middle of I don't know where, in the Pacific someplace. And it was a Sunday morning. And all of a sudden, now hear this, now hear this. This is a ship's captain. It was the Cuban blockade. We sailed in a circle for about 24 hours, not knowing whether or not we were going to the Philippines or to Guam or someplace to pick up uh, dependent families and get them out of whatever harms we may have been. Um, then I did my 18 months on Okinawa. I was a Women's Army Corps detachment commander. And of course, at we had the um, Kennedy assassination during that period of time. Um, then I was coming home Easter weekend in 1964, sitting on the runway, the tarmac in Japan, waiting to go on to Anchorage when uh, they came over the loudspeaker and said, um, we'll be here for a little while. There's been an earthquake in Alaska and there's no uh, terminal facility, no air traffic controllers, no place to land. So we have to figure out where we can go and we sat there for five hours. And finally they, you know, every once in a while they'd come on and they'd say something. Well, we're, we're, we're weighing our weight and figuring the headwinds to see if we can make Seattle. Well, that was really reassuring. <laughs> so then they, they finally decided that, uh, yes, we could do that. But then, Back in 1964, SeaTac was not yet an international airport and there were no customs agents there. So we couldn't leave until we knew that customs agents could come from Vancouver, British Columbia, down to Seattle in time to meet us. Um, all this time, they did not take on any food. They did not take on any extra water. They did not take on any extra lavatory supplies. <laughs> and it was a full airplane. And um, I've never been so happy to land any place in my life as I was that morning when we got to Seattle. And there I was. 175 miles from home and they wouldn't let me get off. I had to go to San Francisco. So um, back on the airplane and uh, off we went. And by the way, I had planned to come back to surface, but my replacement didn't come and I missed the ship. So I had extra luggage. And um, that was a real challenge, getting all this through. Finally, when it came my turn to go through customs, I says, all my drugs and alcohol are in this bag. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy just looked at me and waved me through. <laughs> so that's one of my war stories. 
That was, that was a great story. Thank you. That's a tough act to follow. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, one or two questions. The uh, one on behalf of one of uh, our guests, that is, uh, are you doing any networking with veterans groups in order to make this project move forward more quickly? Could you tell us about that? Well, we have a great network of veterans organizations, um, the VFW, the American Legion, um, the um, DAV, Disabled Veterans. Um, we have a uh, chapter of West Point grads, a chapter of Air Force grads, a chapter of <coughs> Naval Academy grads. Um, but as far as social networking, we're none of us electronically intelligent enough to do anything of that nature yet. We have to find some young people who know how to tweet and Twitter and whatever, blog and whatever else people do these days. Um, we do have Facebook, we do have, um, but I don't have anyone to run that right now either, so. Um, I'm kind of twixt and tween on people at this point. Okay. Because we haven't been moving fast enough and they lose interest. Uh, thanks for that answer. I'd like to follow up with this question. Uh, this is more of a political question. One of the things that's uh, been very uh, noteworthy with the fairgrounds has been the contention with the uh, fair boosters and the turnover in the fair board. And you could answer this in a yes or no question or decline to answer it at all. But my question is this. Has the contention with any of the fair boards or the boosters impacted this process? None to my knowledge. I'm, um, I, I'm not had any dialogue with the boosters, but like I had previously said, we have briefed the fair board and the fair advisor Fair Board Advisory Council every step of the way and and have gotten their blessing. Um, as far as the boosters and the political infighting, I know nothing more than what I've read in the newspapers, okay. which has been quite a lot in the past, but uh, um, the county did make some moves to where The fairgrounds at this point only belong to the fair board during the fair, I think. I think that's the way it goes, or the boosters or whomever. I, not to be quoted on that. I better, better just not say because I don't know, but the people that should have concurrence with this project, we have done that. Do you have any more questions? Well, then I'm going to call for a round of applause. I'll, I'll even let you take that thing out of there. Okay, excellent. Betty, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Uh, folks, we have a tentative hold with Hillsborough Empowering Youth uh, speaking next week. They're a nonprofit that uh, focuses on uh, drug education for the Hillsborough School District. And with that being said, I want to thank you for being here and conclude today's forum.